Hello, everyone, again. Uh, this is Todd Nuke from the Egan Axon Business Department, and this is the second of the quantitative reasoning videos um, associated with uh, letters to my son. So in the first video, we talked about the important concepts of changes and ratios and percent changes. In the second video, we want to kind of use those concepts to talk about the equally important, maybe even more important concepts of compounding and the rule of 70. All right. So let's begin by talking about compounded growth, right? So what do we mean by compounded growth? Compounded growth refers to the fact that when a variable grows at a constant rate, the change in that variable increases at an increasing rate, right? So even if, if, it, if something is growing at a constant rate, like let's say population, if population is increasing at 1% a year, the change in the population is actually getting bigger every single year. Why is that? Well, in population, it's pretty easy to understand why, right? Babies have babies, right? So if your population grows, you have more people, those more people have more babies that increase the population larger and larger and larger. So a population that is 7 billion people but growing at 2% a year is changing more than a population of 1 billion people but growing at 2% a year. That's the power of compounding, right? That you get bigger and bigger changes even with constant rates of growth. And so we understand that the power of compounding is very, very important in understanding many, many different quantitative ideas. Um, for instance, why saving early when you're young is so important, right? Because the more that you save today, the longer that you are giving your savings time to compound over time, right? And so for most people, when they get to retirement age, it's not the money that they put in initially that they're, they're gonna live on. It's all that compounded interest that becomes the biggest part of their retirement nest egg, right? So this ability to put money in today and let it compound and grow over time is a hugely important part of saving and investment. Understanding compounding is then crucial to understanding how things change over time, and it's also really important to understanding inequality today. And that's why we're talking about this in conjunction with letters to my son. So probably the easiest way to kind of see how compounding works in, in practice is to understand a little and very useful rule of thumb, which is the rule of 70. All right, so let me put this up here. The rule of 70 simply says that if a variable is growing at a compounded annual growth rate of X percent a year, it doubles in size every 70 divided by X years, right? Let me say that again. If a variable is growing at a compounded annual rate of X percent a year, it doubles in size every 70 divided by X years. That sounds a little complicated, but really this is pretty simple. What if something is growing at 1% a year? It doubles in size every 70 years, 70 divided by one. What if something's growing at 2% a year? It doubles every 35 years, 70 divided by two. What if something's growing at 3% a year? Then it roughly doubles every roughly 23 years, 70 divided by three, right? So this little rule of thumb is a very quick way to think about how things double or how long it takes things to, to double. And when you think about growth in terms of doubling, you, can, you begin to get deeper insight into how compounding can completely change the, the relative value of, of different things over time. So let me talk about three reasons specifically why compounding is first very important. First off, note that it's the rule of 70, not the rule of 100, right? So if something's growing at 1% a year, it doesn't take 100 years to double in size. It only takes 70 years, right? That's compounding, right? If something was growing at 1% a year, but not at a compounded rate, then it would take 100 years. But because of compounding, it takes less than 100 years, right? It takes about 70 years. And so that's the power of compounding. The second important thing, or the second reason why compounding really gives us some insights, is it helps us to understand 
why growing faster over a long period of time can lead to huge differences in levels, right? That growing faster, sustaining it over long periods of time leads to huge changes in levels. Let me give you an example to try to illustrate this point. Okay, so I want to here, if this starts sharing, I want to talk about two countries, okay? Let's talk about country A. And let's say that country A is growing at 1% a year. And then country B. Country B is growing at 2% a year. And let's say that today, these two countries are just as rich as each other. I'm just gonna pick a number arbitrarily here of 100. Both of them have income of 100. Where are these countries gonna be in 70 years? Well, let's think about that. For country A, how long will it take them to double? Well, they're growing at 1%, so it's gonna take them 70 divided by one or 70 years. In 70 years, their income will be 200 relative to the 100 today. Well, what's gonna be true about country B? They're doubling every 35 years, 70 divided by two. So if we think about what happens to country B, in 35 years, they double once to 200. In 70 years, they double again to 400. Notice here that country B has gotten twice as rich as country A. Even small differences in growth rates can lead to huge differences in levels over time, right? So you might say, what's the difference between 2% and 1%? It's small, right? No, it's huge, right? And when you take into, the, the, into effect or in, into consideration the power of compounding, that is a huge, huge difference, right? So small differences in growth rates can lead to huge differences in levels over time. The third really important concept to understand here is that even if two countries are growing at the same rate, differences in levels tend to get larger over time, okay? Once again, let me give you a, a, a similar example. Let's say that we have two countries here. Both countries are growing at 2%. So country A is growing at 2%, country B is growing at 2%, okay? Here's the difference. Country B is twice as rich as country A. They have a hundred, they're a hundred dollars richer than country B, okay? So the two countries are growing at the same rate, but country B is, country, is richer than country A. Where are these two countries gonna be in 70 years? Well, in 35 years, both countries will double. And in 70 years, both countries will double again. Look what's happened here to the difference in income between these two countries. Country B has gone from being 100 richer to 400 richer, right? So differences in le levels tend to get magnified thanks to the power of compounding, right? And the rule of 70 helps us see this, right? The rule of 70 is just a quick and easy way to help us see this. So why are we talking about compounding in the rule of 70? Because it has a number of really important implications for inequality and how things change over time. One of the first important implications is that time is money, right? You've heard that before. But to say time is money is not quite correct. Time is money, especially when you start with money, right? When you start with money, you can take advantage of the power of compounding. But what happens if you never start with money? then you don't have the ability to, to, to take advantage of the powers of compounding. Without that ability, what you're gonna find is that you, find you fall farther and farther behind over time, right? So this leads to another important concept, which is path dependency. Where you start matters, right? Where you start matter. If you start with more, you will have more over time, right?
So there is a path dependency. In other words, the history, history where you start matters, right? William Faulkner said that the past is never dead. It's not even past. And you can certainly see that when you talk about compounding. Having a little bit more money at the beginning can lead to you having a lot more money at the end. This also raises this question about meritocracy, right? That people necessarily rise to the top because they're somehow better, right? This, this mythology that we all are running a race and somehow we're starting at the same spot, but some of us are running faster than others. In reality, most of us are running the same speed, but what we find is that people start at different places. And strangely enough, starting a little bit ahead because of the power of compounding allows you to run faster, right? And so when you begin to think about this, this mythology of meritocracy, you begin to really see that meritocracy is not consistent with the, the important power of compounding and the importance of path dependency. Compounding also helps us understand the nature of inequality, and particularly racial inequality, right? What we see here in the United States is that today the typical white family has 20 times the wealth as the typical black family, right? The typical white family um, has a great deal more wealth. And a lot of that, as we will find in our readings to letter in the letter from my, to my son, and also from the documentary that we watch, um, really has to do with some of the ways that blacks were deprived of the conditions on which they could build wealth, specifically redlining, right? This practice of, of, of segregating black families into certain neighborhoods where they could not get access to finance. Without access to finance, they could not buy houses that would appreciate over time and allow their wealth to compound. And so we're gonna see this in the documentary and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, in our lectures about how redlining and the, the way that it has basically blocked the power of compounding for many black families has contributed to important differences in wealth between black and white families. And we also see this in your quantitative reasoning exercise where there's a problem where you'll actually kind of use the rule of 70 to, to try to come up and show that, the, that this is actually the, the logical result of compounding. So anyway, uh, the rule of 70 is a very useful rule of thumbs to think about how things change over time. All the best.